Inspired by the colors around her, author and designer Amy Sweet McNamara combines her love of color and architectural shapes to create amazing jewelry with soutache braid and tiny beads. Hey Amy, thanks Hi. for joining us. Thanks Katie, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, and you're going to show us how to make this. Now you can make this in an evening once you're, you know, getting started out and trying this out. But you also have some examples of things that you can make if you have way more time. That's right. Making it more elaborate. We can do the four elements element in an evening and wear it as a pendant the next day. But if you wanted to continue just using the techniques we're going to talk about today, you could easily make a larger pendant. You could use them to make a pair of earrings. You could triple them up and make a three station necklace so easily. Beautiful. This is a great technique. I can't wait to get started. Well, we're going to start with the spiral technique. You're going to start with a threaded needle. I generally use 24 to 30 inches of thread. We're using it a little bit shorter today. I have a large knot on the end and I've trimmed the tail off of my knot. Take one 12 inch piece of soutache and sew through the soutache at the rib. The rib is the skinny line that runs down the length of the soutache about one inch from the end. Pull through until the knot just rests against the end of the soutache. And then you're going to fold the soutache on approximately a 90 degree angle. And like so many things in beading, getting it started is a little bit the hardest part. So you're going to sew through the fold like so. This is really a stitching project. Very much a stitcher's craft. And this is a little bit, starting is a little bit like making those ribbon roses that you might have made oh, in the yeah. past. So I'm turning a half turn and sewing through the whole diameter. And Very you're going to cool. continue doing that until you get a little bit of um, a circle built up. And that can take a few minutes, so ultimately it's going to end up with something that looks like this. Now I have something I can really hold on to, and I can continue on and it starts to move much faster. I'm holding it upside down, and I'm turning the work, and I'm inserting my needle into the rib. And it doesn't matter whether I pick up two or three layers of soutache, but I'm going through the work, and then turning it a little bit more, and going into the side and out the back. So these are just whip stitches and they're gonna show on the back. Now normally you would use a thread that coordinates with the colors of your soutache, but so people can see this a little bit better, I'm intentionally using a contrasting thread. I'm using red on green. Um, and you're still gonna understand just how well the soutache hides things. So you can see how I'm just turning it and I keep building it and building it and building it. Okay. After you have built that up, and used up most of the soutache, you're going to want to tack down these loose ends. Tacking is really easy and they're always done as pairs of stitches. You go back to front and front to back. So here I've sewn from back to the front and then in the front all that is really important is to make sure that you put your needle in pretty close to where the thread came out. Soutache has some really nice qualities and one is that the fibers will open up and absorb the stitches. Yeah, you can kind of hide your Hide your stitching that way. Yeah, they just disappear. It's sort of magical, really. So I'm, sta I'm tacking down the beginning of that spiral, and I'm going to quickly tack down the end of the spiral. You have to remember, you're not anchoring down the QE2 here, so one or two stitches <laughs> is going to get the job done. Okay. So you just want to make sure that as you go along, you're tacking everything into place. That's right. Because that is what makes it the finish, and really. Then, yep, and then you can just cut off those extra ends so that they're not in your way as you continue around. Okay. Now the next job here is to add a little ring of beads around this nice cute little spiral that we've made here. So I'm sort of starting at the overlap end. Okay. Oops, helps if we have a knot on the needle there. There we go. That didn't mean to get cut off, but it did. And I sew through so that my thread is coming out the rib and I pick up a bead. This happens to be a size 8 seed bead. And I have a new pair of pieces of soutache. These happen to be about 18 inches long. Okay. And I put them together and I start again about an inch from the end, sewing through both. And I'm going to begin to make a series of S-shaped stitches going through this outside stack, picking up a bead, and going into that base spiral. And you can see I'm even coming right out the front of the work and it doesn't matter because again, as long as I go right back in sure. where the thread came out, it's not going to show. So you're hiding it in there in between? Yeah, it just kind of, it just sort of disappears. So you can continue on in that fashion and follow it all the way around until you have 
a complete ring of beads going all the way around your spiral and that's connecting your new outside stack. From there, you're going to let the outside stack lay over itself and you're gonna continue doing the same kind of whip stitches that we did when we were making the small, the, the outside part of the small inside spiral. And of course there's nothing quite as much fun as wrapping your thread into your soutache. That's always a really great way to go. <laughs> And here I'm just doing another whip stitch. And all of these stitches are gonna get completely covered. So it doesn't really matter how big they are. You just wanna make sure that you're going into the rib on the outside and getting a good kind of healthy stitch in there to right. hold it down. So that's the same process that we saw before where you're just whipping it down on the back. Exactly. And tacking everything into place. Now, you could also add more of these, right? If you wanted to, you could you add. You could. You could you could continue the beads in a spiral and make like a pinwheel shape. Absolutely, you could. This is one that's uh, pretty much complete. I have all the beads uh, around the center spiral and then I have the outer spiral. And now we're gonna decorate it with these little lollipop shapes. And a lollipop in soutache and bead embroidery has to do with one stack wrapping around one bead and creating a join. So when we talk about the lollipop, that's it right there. And you could put any size bead in there. Mm -hmm. I happen to be using a six millimeter bead. So okay. I've sewn through two pieces, again, just letting my knot rest against the bottom of the stack. And I'm gonna take two shaping stitches. Shaping stitches in soutache and bead embroidery are a little bit longer on the outside of the curve and a little bit shorter on the inside of the curve. So, but these are just running stitches, essentially. This is just like if when you were a little kid you had uh, those cardboard cutouts with the holes in them and you ran the shoelace up and down, up and down. That's all the running stitches. I just picked up that six millimeter bead and I'm going back back up through the stack toward the knot. Okay. I'm gonna make two more shaping stitches going in the opposite direction. There's one. Great. I said two, what I really meant was three, that's two. So are you just, when you make the shaping stitches on the outside of the bead, are you just allowing for the size of the bead that That's you're using? That's exactly right, you're eyeballing okay. it. I always tell my students, soutache and bead embroidery is a lot more like sculpture. Um, than it is like a lot of other crafts in that you can make modifications. I went up through the bead a second time so that wraps that other side of the stack around the bead and now I'm sewing back down through the stack and the six millimeter bead and we're going to do what's called a two-sided join. Two-sided join is a gradual join. You take the innermost strands together and you hold them together very snug you sew up through the upper innermost strand, down through both innermost strands. Oops, got a little catch there. Pull that out of the way. Okay, and that's for bringing the center piece together. That's right, that's for bringing the stacks around the bead so that we get, oops, so that we get as tight a join as possible. All right. And now I'm adding in the outer layers as well. And it's really important when you're working with soutache to put almost no tension on your thread. So even when I was doing those spirals, I'm using what we call zero thread tension. You wanna think about leaving a little breath of air underneath each stitch. So here now I have a nice round wrap around that bead. And I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna add a very short ladder of beads for a little decorative element underneath the lollipop. Here I've picked up a size 11 and I'm sewing through the top stack. Then I sew down through the top stack and I'm gonna pick up a size eight seed bead. So you're playing with the dimensionality too of the beads. Yeah, just giving it a little bit more texture, a little bit more movement so that it's not boring. Now I'm sewing up through the bottom stack, picking up one more of those size 11 seed beads. All right. And that gives us just a little kind of an in-out element right there. And now I need to close up this pair of stacks. I'm gonna do that by just sewing through both of them a couple of times. And the very last part of this is to train this into a curve. And as crazy as it sounds, you sew it into a curve by holding it in the curve that you want as you make those stitches. Oh right, so they're the perfectly sized 
stitch for holding it in place. Exactly right. You don't have to think about it real hard. It's one of those like don't overthink it, just do it kind of things. So I want this shape to have a little hook on the end because we're going to use that hook to hook over the outside of our spiral shape. Okay. Once you've done that, you can trim off the ends. And you can go ahead and you can make three more. I have four of them all ready to go here. Okay. And then they just get tacked in place on the element that you've already created. And again, tacking happens from back to front and then from front to back. You're Perfect. probably going to use four or five stitches for each one of these little components. So you basically just want to secure them down into place? Yep. From... Yep. Just let them hook over the edge. And when you've got four of them on, you're going to put them on in kind of a crisscross pattern like this. You might choose to add a jump ring to the top of one of them. All right. When you're done with that, you're going to take that element and you're going to add a jump ring if you want it and then you're going to glue it down onto a piece of ultra suede. You glue it down onto the wrong side of the ultra suede. That's what I've done here and it's already dried. And then you trim it out. I started trimming this one out a little bit earlier. When okay. you trim it, you want to make sure you leave about a one millimeter margin of ultra suede showing beyond the edge of the soutache and bead embroidery. You just want to be careful not to over trim as you go. So here's a piece that's all trimmed out and ready to go. There's that jump ring. I just tacked it onto the top earlier. And that'll give you a place to hang your pendant. Exactly. Or if you wanted to use it for earrings, you could. Exactly. And then the last piece of the puzzle here is to do what we call edge beading. And edge beading, uh, you may be familiar with, it's also called brick stitch. And the first thing that you want to do is bury the knot. So I have a prepared thread. I've got a knot on the end of the thread. And I'm choosing a place to sew into where my needle can come out the rib of the soutache on the edge of the work, but the knot will bury itself inside the bead that I sewed into. Perfect. So we don't see that. To begin edge beading, you start out by picking up two size 11 seed beads and you sew through the edge of the work so that the needle comes out the ultra suede backing. Okay. And then you bring your needle towards you and you sew through the last hole of the last bead. That's always about as clear as mud to people. So we're gonna continue on with this for a couple of beads. Sounds good. From here on out, I work one bead at a time. I'm sewing into the rib of the soutache, out the ultra suede, I bring my needle toward me and I sew through the last hole of the last bead so that my thread exits between the last bead and the second to last bead. Okay. Pick up another one, we'll do it one more time. Into the rib, out the ultra suede, sew toward myself so that the needle exits between the last bead and the second to last bead. And if you look really carefully, you're going to see that all of these beads stand up like little rain barrels. The holes are up and out, not lining up one next to another. You can actually see the thread going from this hole to that hole to that hole. And that's what Brick Stitch is all about. The nice thing about learning this uh, edge beading technique is that when you start getting really interested in soutache, you're going to start wanting to join components together together and the edge beads create this really it great opportunity possible. to connect things to yeah. each other. Well it is such an architectural looking piece when you're finished it is. and it's interesting to see that you're building that architecture too as you go along. It is. And it's very sturdy jewelry. Right and yeah. and you can see how it's all going to be connected if you want to add more to it you can but this is a really easy way to start out. Yes yes yeah. it is and the spirals build up real quickly. They sure do. And we're going to have this pattern online so people can get the instructions yes. and follow along. Yes. And that way they can learn how to build it along with you. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So let's take a look at the way that you built on these basic techniques and to create these elaborate pieces over here. Okay. Very yeah. Good. Let's start out with this bright bracelet right here because you can see that lollipop pattern. You can. You can see the lollipop pattern, you know, here particularly, but really if you were to uh, kind of get into this project, even this centerpiece technically is a lollipop. It starts out with a cabochon that's got a, a beaded bezel. We do bead embroidery around that, but then that soutache is one stack going around an object and making one join underneath. So it's still the same basic technique. 
And I love the way that you combine all the embroidery with it too. It's it's definitely a stitcher's art. This is for people who love needle and thread and who love texture and probably for people who love color. Yeah, There's a definitely. lot to get in there. Where do you get that inspiration for the color on these pieces? Color inspiration comes from a lot of different places for me. It can come from a painting that I see in a museum. I had a one called Bollywood Wedding that oh, was nice. from a scene in a movie where they were having this beautiful Indian wedding. So it comes from all over the place. Yeah, I can see how, especially in your work, that you can tell that you're getting inputs from all over. Everywhere, absolutely. So Certainly. sometimes I'll work in more staid colors and more neutral colors. Sometimes I'll work in things that are a little bit edgier with a lot of black and chrome and spikes and things like that. It just depends on what's going on in my world. Yeah, well, let's take a look at this Druzy earrings here. Druzy, everybody loves Druzy right now. It's so terrific, and uh, I'm really fortunate. I have access to a company that uh, makes them for me with holes in them so they can be held down as beads as oh, opposed perfect. to working with them as cabochons. So once they're created that way, um, I can surround them with more bead embroidery or with rhinestones because, you know, a little is nice and, and more is just enough. And <laughs> uh, and then again, we're st that's still just a lollipop shape on those Druzy earrings, and we're ending the stacks around those glass pearls and then created a completely separate lollipop which is that marquee shaped bead at the bottom of the earring that's just a simple lollipop that was created totally standalone and then tacked behind the first piece of work it all gets glued down and edge beaded you can do pieces that are connected one behind the other, which is how those earrings are done. You can edge bead separate components and actually bead them together with strands of beads. Then there are techniques where you create separate shapes and you create a ladder that creates like an S shape and connects the two pieces that way. So that begins to be part of the fun of the work is this multi-layered, multi-textured kind of a product. Right, well it looks like the piece in the front with the blue beads is one is Right, what you're talking about with the multi-layers, multi-textures. That pattern is called chain, 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 and the joy of it is that you learn how to make one shape. You start with a lollipop around that, that pearl coin. You learn how to make uh, a curved ladder, and there is a kind of a super secret squirrel trick to getting it to look like you've got this endless curve that ends up with that swan's head with the bugle beads. And you make these components one at a time, and you thread one through another oh, and so then close them. them and then connect, you connect them and then you finish the piece. So it's Beautiful. kind of a kind of a tricky little technique, but once you've learned it, you can create these long chains and they really do articulate like a chain. Oh, well, it looks gorgeous. It does look like chain and I love the colors that you chose too. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Let's talk a little bit too about the cabochon necklaces in the front. So the cabochon necklaces in the front, the one on the right is, uh, we call that a pendulum necklace in, in our little world uh, at the studio. And it's really about uh, experimenting with a lot of bead embroidery, but it's still being held together by the soutache. And I think that the joy of that piece is finding, um, the, doing the soutache kumihimo so that it all feels cohesive and it's all of a piece. And then we move on to what we call the serpents and swans head uh, component and that's another on the black, uh, necklace, on the black necklace yeah it's, it's called serpents and swans heads is, is what that uh, particular project is called and when I did it in the black and the chrome it really lent itself to kind of this heavy chain look and it takes on a totally different attitude and a totally different uh, style Definitely, and it has a lot of those swirl parts that are happening there at the yeah. connection points too. A lot of interweaving, yeah. Yes, and you can see where you've tacked on your jump rings too to create a connection. Yep. And then combining it with the chain it gives it a whole different look. Yep. And yeah. one of the other things that's uh, becoming more and more of a joy to work with is the shibori ribbon, which is the silk pleated ribbon, and that lends itself really well too because it is also a textile. And that looks beautiful on the ivory bracelet mm -hmm. too. Well, let's just remind everybody that we learn which by starting with one component like this mm -hmm. that's how you can launch into this whole world absolutely so you know people might have to be careful this might be addictive it's very very addictive <laughs> yeah if you care about your dusting don't start yeah. <laughs> start small <That's> right. <laughs> all right well thank you so much amy thank you, thank you. No, it's I'm my pleasure. so happy to have you here